everyone. My name is Joanna Alvarez and I'm here today with Mike Sweeney. I'm part of Barcelo Hotel Group and I've been working at Barcelo for the past couple, four years exactly. And I dedicate myself to uh, everything related to ad tech, to attribution modeling and also to analytics. Today I, I actually joined Mike in this call to to tell you a bit about this article that we've been working on together, which is all related to attribution modeling and how we see attribution modeling in the future, based on all the inputs that we've been receiving throughout these past months since Google announced that they plan to shut off support to third-party cookies within two years. So, Mike, would you like to say something? Yeah, so as you said, my name's Mike. Uh, I'm head of marketing at a company called ClearCode, and uh, we're a ad tech and martech development company. So what that means is we work with uh, different companies that operate in the advertising and marketing industries, from tech companies through to publishers, uh, brands and agencies to design and build uh, design and build software, basically for the ad tech and martech industries. Nice. So we actually thought of a answering a couple questions related to, to the article, to the privacy changes that we've seen uh, these past couple months, and also to, to the ad tech industry in general. So we prepared those seven questions and we plan on uh, pushing out those questions in uh, small videos, basically like um, short videos of two or three questions is each time. And today we'll be answering the first two. One of the things that we would like you to know as well is that if you have any question in mind that you would like us to answer, please let us know and we will go for it for sure. So if, you, if you're ready, Mike, I'm ready and we can start answering the questions. Perfect. Excellent. All right. So the first question, should I answer it or do you want to ask it? No, you, you go first. I'll go ahead. Perfect. All right. So the first question is, uh, what is, what is your opinion on this whole uh, privacy topic in ad tech and martech? Hmm. That's, that's actually a very interesting question, but at the same time, it's kind of broad. I'm actually going to stick to th two things. The first one uh, that comes to my mind when, when you ask that is that these changes, these whole uh, privacy-related changes, make me think so much about how certain companies are actually creating wall gardens and are actually seeing an opportunity in in a flow that's in the market to gain more market share and that also takes me to the idea that we talk so much about how consumers supposedly are more interested on privacy and are more concerned on pri about privacy but the reality is that when you look into data and when you look at how people actually behave when it comes to data privacy, what you realize is that, in fact, that interest is, is not there. That people actually go to the website and just click accept and keep navigating without even knowing what they are accepting. And it's actually in our human component to, to want things kind of fast. And, and I think that's actually an issue. But at the same time, the fact that's that we talk so much about that growing concern is what for me that has made the or has opened the door to those companies like Google or Facebook to create those wall gardens and to use that flow in the market to, to create the, the wall garden. Mm -hmm. That's my take on that. What about you, Perfect. Mark? What do you think? Yeah, I, I think that you, you raised some really, uh, really great points there. And, and uh, obviously, we talk a lot about this in our, uh, in our various, uh, in, the, in the various blog posts that we have in this series. Um, but one point that you mentioned uh, a second ago about uh, users, you know, internet users, is that um, a lot of, a lot of internet users probably don't care about, about privacy or they don't, um, they don't understand the, the whole privacy topic in digital advertising and marketing. And uh, I think that is, uh, that's quite a valid point. And maybe it's not that, I, I think it is partly that they maybe don't care, but a, a large part of it is they also probably don't understand it. Totally. So, uh, um, and w we've seen examples of this, you know, even recently over the past couple of years when uh, the European Union introduced the GDPR and all these, um, you know, all these websites started 
uh, you know, Im implementing these consent management platforms and asking users for consent. And of course, the actual format of those uh, of those forms looks looks different pretty much on every website, right? Um, but you, now you can, you know, we can see stories and, and see reports of um, of various opt-in rates, right? And of course, you know, this kind of suggests that for a lot of users, they don't really care that much about about privacy, um, and they just they just want to access the content. They just want to get to the website, right? So yeah, I, I think that that's a that's a quite an important point is that it's not a, a blanket that you can just throw across the internet because certainly there are a lot of um, internet users, particularly you know savvy uh, internet users that do care about their privacy. But I think the the key here with this whole user privacy topic, and this is something that we'll no doubt talk about. Uh, with the rest of the questions and also in the article is that uh, ultimately it should come down to giving users uh, choice. It should come down to giving users transparency and control. And uh, I think as, as the industry, uh, both the advertising and marketing industries, they haven't taken user privacy into consideration with any of the technological advancements that have happened over the past 10, 15, 20 years. User privacy was never built in to ad tech or martech, right? So what's so now? What's happened is governments have got involved, and web browsers have got involved, and other companies have got involved to to strengthen user privacy on behalf of consumers. Because as a as an industry, that they haven't done that themselves. But I think it is it is um, quite important that we give users control, transparency, uh, and choice. And the, uh, particularly with a lot of the the changes that are happening in web browsers, this is not happening because. Safari and Firefox have blocked third-party cookies without actually giving users a choice whether whether they you know whether users um, you know block them or not. They've just blocked them by default. So I think that is that is quite a key element of this whole user privacy issue is actually giving putting it in the hands of of consumers and letting them decide. Um, but certainly there are some some areas of that that uh, where it's not happening. So. So I, you actually touched on so many interesting things on, on your answer. And the first one for me is the fact that, that, that people don't really understand what privacy is all about. And the fact that, that this whole thing is, is actually difficult even for, for lawmakers and for, um, yeah, for congressmen and for, for companies itself. It's like, it's very dif uh, difficult to understand uh, many times a law that has so many great points in between. But in the end, for me, the most important part is that even the basic concepts for many people are like um, a topic that they don't really get to, to understand. And it's very important for me to actually differentiate or to actually make a point in the fact that this is actually a shared responsibility. And many times, um, let's say that the responsibility is fully put on the company for uh, making sure that they are communicating the, um, um, the message uh, like in a clear way. That was actually something that came up also with GDPR. And I'm actually very grateful that that happened because in fact, in the past, it used to be like, I mean, of course, nobody understood what was going on because people did what they wanted and that was it. But <laughs> it is clearer now and the fact that it is clear makes me believe, like deeply believe that there's also this shared, this responsibility that falls in the user side and that people should also be, that they shouldn't be waiting for a company to tell them what privacy is or what rights they have in terms of sharing their information because it is the information they, we are talking about right here. And it is everybody's responsibility to know a, what it means to actually share our data. And we, we will actually touch on this later on and uh, we will both share our ideas on uh, how worried or concerned we should, we are with respect to sharing our data. But yeah, I mean, I, I totally believe it is a shared responsibility it, and it should, shouldn't fall only on the, on the company side, basically. That is yeah. one of the things that you mentioned and, and that I that really stuck with me. But the other one was also the fact that that the changes, the latest changes are taking that um, that consent away from the consumer or from the final user. 
And that's so important. I mean, that's that's a point that we really need to make because users won't really have the opportunity of saying, I do want to interact with this. Um, it's not that they really say that, that they want to interact with a, a retargeting company in the end. It's not that, that open, but they don't have the opportunity of saying yes or no to that. The browser is, um, it's going to cut it up by default, as you mentioned. And, and that's mm -hmm. a very interesting point. Yeah, cool. Yeah, no, I, to I totally agree with that. And particularly when we're talking about things like consent and we've seen, as we've seen with the examples with the GDPR, mm -hmm. is that, you know, there's like different, there's different implementations of, of even this part about consent with the GDPR, right? You know, we, we see some um, consent management platforms that, you know, do provide choice straight away where others try to, you know, sort of hide, you know, the, the settings that make it a little bit harder for, for consumers to, to make that choice. So there are many different parts to this as well. But when we're talking about giving users a choice, it, it, it also needs to tick other boxes as well. We can't just simply say, you know, um, we can't simply show them a, a pop-up form and then have one button that says OK and another button that says more settings or something like that. Um, th there are a lot of other things that need to be that need to be done, such as making it more uh, transparent about you know what's happening uh, and um, yeah, giving them control as well, uh, uh, not only choice. So yeah, there, there are a lot, lot lot of key elements to this um, to, to this part as well. But yeah, I, I totally agree with what you said. That part of our transparency, Mike, is, is super key as well because in the end, transparency builds trust and trust is yeah. what this whole thing is about. I mean, people are going to share their information with you for as long as you are being able to build trust and for as long yeah. as um, you haven't done anything shady with their data. And and that part as well is like a... Is, is something that I really keep in mind and something that I try to uh, to advocate for. That that idea about communicating, um, for example, the cookie, your cookie policy or the message about cookies. For me, that should be super personalized and very specific to each brand because that that in the end is the initial way in which you start communicating with the with your users or the very first thing they see when they land in your website, and that specific thing is going to be like the starting point of something that, well, of all, of all the other things that you have in your digital marketing strategy. And having an informed concern, consent is, is actually a great way of auto-segmentating, seg segmenting, segmenting, is that a word? Mm -hmm. You're yeah, yet. segmenting, yep. <laughs> so basically letting them know really what you are going to do with their data and letting them choose and for them saying yes or no is, is a great way of knowing if they do want to participate in that whole process that you have afterwards or not. So it's mm -hmm. a very, very interesting topic to, to deep dive into. Yeah, exactly. Many, many, diff many different parts with many different pieces to the puzzle. <laughs> totally. So Mike, what do you think will be the best approach for companies moving forward? Personalization and one one on one measurement uh, via first party data uh, or non personalized number advertising and group level measurement. Well, that's a really interesting question because uh, these are essentially, you know, the, the, many of these are the sort of options I suppose moving forward for a lot of advertising and marketing companies and brands and, and publishers as well. That the thing about third party cookies is that, you know. Yes, it did underpin um, a lot of the key advertising and marketing processes. First of all, it was about identity, right? Third-party cookies uh, typically used to identify people across different websites, uh, to run attribution and measurement, etc. cetera. Um, but the other thing about third-party cookies, particularly in the context when we're talking about possible you know, alternatives or solutions uh, when there are no third-party cookies available, is that third-party cookies you know, can essentially be used by pretty much every company. Of course, you've got to do cookie syncing because of the technical limitations, you know, different domains can't read other domains' uh, cookies, so you've got to do, you know, syncing and, and matching up. But they, they could be used by um, pretty much any ad tech or martech company. When we start talking about things like first-party data or, you know, creating IDs, um, 
based on on email addresses, for example, these these solutions are are quite viable for a lot of you know big publishing companies, for example, that have multiple web properties mm -hmm. that you know can store these IDs in a CDP or some other data platform and allow that you know sort of create this identity across their properties. But it's really only can only be used in that context. They are very limited in reach. You know, first party IDs, first party data, etc., is very limited in reach. That's what one of the benefits of third party cookies is is the reach of it. You cross site identification, right? So uh, I think the the decision. Getting back to the original question, but the decision to you know uh, go down this path of using first party data, creating IDs from email addresses or phone numbers or whatever, or you know using different uh, methods such as you know contextual targeting um, or you know wh whatever happens with uh, Google Chrome's privacy sandbox you know whether that is an option or I'm, I'm I, certainly it will be it's just not really sure what kind of form it will be in or what it will look like you know sort of using uh, more privacy friendly ways of, of targeting uh, ads and, and, and using that for attribution as well I think it will come down to you know individual companies I think individual companies will make these decisions based upon um, you know what method is is more viable for them because not every I mean when, when you think about advertising for example um, and you've got like a large publishing company that collects a lot of first-party data that can you know create audiences that can be used uh, for ad targeting right they're in a good position to do that because they have a lot of different properties they got a lot of um, you know uh, you know, a big engaged audience, a regular audience. But when you look at the sort of small and, and medium-sized uh, websites or individual bloggers, th that might not be such a viable option for them because, you know, it might be, you know, too, ex too expensive to sort of do that. So I think it'll, it'll all come down to, uh, it'll be an individual uh, company decision based upon what, what methods are, are viable for them, whether it is, you know, to, to build some sort of tech uh, or to use an existing solution or completely change the sort of way that they they um, they show ads on their website you know instead of showing ads that are that are um, behaviorally targeted just turning to to contextual where there's really um, no need to collect any kind of user level data so it, it will come down to the individual circumstances I think but um, or it could be a mixture of both as well I think there's a lot of different solutions that are being proposed yeah. and um, I think companies will definitely explore a lot of short-term solutions and they'll also explore longer term solutions as well and try and sort of uh, see, see what kind of mix uh, works over the next few years. But yeah, there's a lot of solutions being proposed, both short term and long term. And uh, yeah, a lot can happen. Mm -hmm. hmm. That, uh, that last point is actually the idea that I, that I have in mind when I think about the future of, uh, of digital advertising. And in, in my very humble opinion, I, I actually believe that it's going to be a mixture of, of both, you know, that in fact, um, many companies are going to start betting very heavily on first party data and uh, collecting as much authenticated data as well as possible to then be able to run personalized on-site uh, experiences. For me, that's going to be super key. But when it comes to measurement and to certain use cases that we used to have, for example, I, I'm not very sure about what the future of frequency capping is going to be, for example. I don't really see a lot of future for that. But when it comes to measurement, and this is something that we are going to cover in the, in the article that we've been writing together, there's actually some light for that and there's a some there are some a solutions being proposed for attribution modeling specifically and for measurement in the future that although don't count on a user level data and um, don't uh, don't go down to that super granular uh, level data that we used to have allow you to to still measure and to still understand the impact that advertising is having on on the generation of revenue of, of the company so I, I believe that it's going to be a mix of both and that as always in life, it's going to be a important to find the balance between those two. And yeah, I, I, I believe it's going to be more of a mix rather than choosing this one or the other. Yeah, yeah, definitely, totally agree. And I think, you know, over the next few years, we're gonna see companies uh, adapt quite uh, often and quite frequently as well. 
uh, because of everything that's that's being proposed and everything that's changing as well. So yeah, there'll be a lot of lot of things that will change uh, over the next few years. I think as companies try and figure out, you know, as you said, the best mix and and the right balance. Totally. One of the things also that you mentioned, Mike, uh, was related to a short term or long term solutions. One second, a short term or long term solutions and. One of the things that I really advocate a lot for as well is running as much as possible for a, a run a, of short-term solutions. And the reason for that is because what we see for sure is that these companies, um, again, Apple, uh, Google, are running or are going, moving uh, towards a model that actually kills, let's say, or... Um, let's say that leaves behind the model that we used to have. So if we try to stick all the time to what we had with workarounds and when sh with short-term solutions, what's going to, hap uh, to happen is that we will dedicate so much time to, to things that these companies are going to end up like cutting away at some point. And, and I, at, at this specific point, the thing that I believe it's the most plausible is actually focusing on on, a, on building a very strong first party data collection and authenticated a uh, first party a uh, first party data of course and that's going to be the foundation for uh, how advertising is going to to be based in the future but we will see yeah yeah no i def definitely agree and like you said just finishing off about the point about apple i mean we've already seen that happen with uh safari's itp as you said you know they implement some update to itp and then there's a workaround uh to try and you know to, to try and you know get get around and, and go back to sort of business as usual so yeah i think definitely when you particularly look at apple compared to maybe for example uh google chrome mm -hmm. um but you know particularly with with safari they they are very focused on user privacy and they don't really are they're not really offering any kind of you know options for ad tech or martech companies to run in, in the same way they have been that they're very much focused on on user privacy and as we've already seen they're going to sort of do whatever it takes to to ensure they that they uh you know complete their mission let's let's say exactly that is actually a topic that that we will cover uh, most likely in the next video which is mm -hmm. something we like to call the privacy policy. And it's something that we will mention also in the article. So that as a bit of a spoiler, I think Mike, that for today, we, we should leave it here. We've answered two yep. questions of the one, uh, out of the list that we had. Again, as we mentioned mm -hmm. at the beginning, if you had any question in mind that you would like us to answer, just let us know and, and we can cover that in the next videos. And that being yeah. said, Mike, as always, it was lovely catching up with you and talking with you. And I'm looking forward to our next, our next video. Sounds good. Me too. Speak then. Okay. Bye.